Thank you for tuning in to Fender Drive's application and product videos today. My name is Dan Verrill. I'm the Fender Drive's belting specialist. And today we're going to talk about Fender Drive's solutions to problems in the distribution center marketplace and in the fulfillment center marketplace. We're going to focus on the live roller conveyors that you all have in your distribution centers and specifically the corners, the belt driven corners. Your belt driven corners are powered by either a 916 round belt or a B-section V-belt. The problem with either one of those belts is the replacement time. It can take up to over an hour to replace the rubber belt and the life. Those belts last between nine months to 12 months on average, so they have to be replaced quite often. We're looking at downtime costs in the industry of anywhere from six to $10,000 in a distribution, distribution center to upwards of $60,000 in a fulfillment center. So when we can save downtime for replacement and skip replacements we're saving we're creating quite a cost savings for the distribution center the round rubber belts are a 9 16 round rubber belt we manufacture a link V belt this is a urethane material fully supported that should drop in replacement to the rubber belt that you're currently using the advantage to this belt is that it comes open-ended in a 25 foot box so number one you're making the belt to length your inventory is reduced. Number two, it goes on open-ended. We eliminate the need for disassembly of the rollers and the conveyor. Taking this belt apart is very simple. The tabs run to the inside. They would be riding on your snub rollers pushed up against the conveyor roller. If I turn this belt inside out and I put a tight bend in it anywhere, I twist that tab on top of the bend. And you can see that link pops right over. Now I just twist the belt. Very easy to make the belt to length, very easy to assemble it on the conveyor. Going back together is just the opposite. The tab will go through the back two holes, tight bend, and I can line that tab up with a hole, and now I've made the belt to length. Very simple procedure, very easy to replace this belt and to, uh, to eliminate the problems of the rubber belt. If you're not running a 9-16 round belt, you're running B-section V-belts. These belts can even be more of a problem because they sometimes require more disassembly to the conveyor and their life, I've heard anything from six months to a year in life. This is the same style of link belt that we just talked about with our round belt. You can see the tabs on the bottom, but we've applied a flat surface to the top of it. This allows us to snub up against the roller, run flat and smooth, eliminate vibration, and power the live roller. The technique to take this apart is slightly different than the round belt. As I mentioned on the round belt, you're going to turn the belt inside out. This belt is easier to work if you're working it from the inside. So if you look at the tab, I'm going to line, twist that tab and I line it up with a hole. Now I can force it over the link. That allows me now to twist the belt and pull the tab out. Very simple procedure. Going back together, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull down on this link. That clears the hole that I've got to insert the tab into. So I can insert that tab. I'll hook this corner inside the link and push it through. I actually just twisted that tab and the belt came through. Now I can line this tab up with a hole and I've put this belt back together. So again, 25 foot, 100 foot boxes. You make the belt to length. Your inventory is greatly reduced. You're assembling the belt onto your conveyor open-ended, eliminating the need to disassemble a conveyor. Now I'm going to show you probably the easiest and most simple way to replace the rubber belt on your conveyor. Remember, your initial replacement is going to be involving replacing a rubber belt. Thereafter, if and when the time comes, you'll be replacing our belt, and it will be the same technique, except what we're going to be doing is actually taping our belt to the end of your rubber belt. In the future, you won't have to do that. You'll just engage our links into the belt you're replacing and pull the belt through. One of the things that we do know is that our belt rides a little bit higher in the snub pulley than the rubber belt. So in the initial application, the first time you install roller drive, you're going to have to loosen your snubs and drop them down. This is a one-time adjustment. The next time you in in install roller drive, you won't have to do that. Now we've already done that on this conveyor to make it a little bit easier and faster to put the belt on. Once you've adjusted your snubs, it's the only time you'll ever have to do it. Now I'm going to take a few minutes to show you just how easy it is to install our link belt, round or V, 
on a live roller corner. The advantage here is that you don't have to disassemble the whole conveyor. So what I'm going to do, you're going to see me do, is cut that rubber belt, and I'm going to duct tape the ends of our belt to the end, butt it up against the end of the rubber belt, and now I'm going to be able to pull our belt through and feed it through all the snub pulleys and rollers and eliminate most of the disassembly to this conveyor. Now what you'll see I have done is I've taken off three of the rollers, because that's going to allow me access to the take up, because we're going to be able to stretch this and pull it right over the take up, and I need to get room to do that. It's easier than crawling in underneath the conveyor. The other thing we've done in this case is we've disconnected the drive. Because I'm pulling the belt through, it has to freewheel. We can do that by disconnecting the drive. If you're unable to do that, well then what you'll want to do is loosen up your take up enough so that you can pop the rubber belt off of the drive pulley, and then we'll pull it around the drive shaft and put it back up on after we've assized the link belt. So those are preparations that we've already made. As I said earlier, our belts do run through. The link belt runs a little bit higher in the snub pulleys than a rubber belt. We've already loosened our snubs so that they're down, and then we'll talk about what the proper tension is to bring the snubs back up. So if you're willing to cut your rubber belt, and most people are because of the time savings, what I'm going to do now is cut the rubber belt, and then we'll duct tape our belt to the end of it. So I'll reach underneath, cut the rubber belt. Now I'll take the end of that belt. In this case, we're going to assume that the boxes are coming in this fashion. They're coming down this, this fashion. Our belt wants to run so the tabs trail. So the belt is running in this direction to cause the rollers to roll and move the boxes in this direction. So we're going to pull the belt through from this end. In this case, I'll take the end of the rubber belt that I've just cut, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to duct tape this to the end of the rubber belt. Now I want to butt, I just want to butt it up against it. I don't want to overlap it because we want to make sure that we haven't added height to the belt so that it won't pull through the snubs. So I'll push this tab up against the end, run the tape down, and then we'll crimp it up get it in there nice and tight. In order to make sure that that tape doesn't pull off the belt, the next step that I do is to take another piece of belt and I will spiral this up around the tape that I've just put on and this is going to help hold that tape onto the link belt, onto the rubber belt, and keep it from pulling off as the tension builds as we pull it through. So now you can see the roller drive is butted up against a rubber belt. We haven't had to disassemble anything on the conveyor. And I'm going to find this end of the belt that we just took. And if you watch, this is the advantage to what we're doing. As I pull this through, I'll keep the tabs right in line of the pulleys as we go. Now think about how much faster this is than what you normally have to do when you start disassembling your live roller conveyor. We're feeding it all the way through. Just take it off there. And coming out the other side. I'll take apart the link belt. And we'll start to determine exactly what the right length is to make our belt to length. The first step you're gonna you're gonna run is take the belt and we're gonna run it through hand tight. So if I Assemble this hand tight, and I'm going to do it here. Well, we're very close. Hand tight would tell me, can you see this? Hand tight, we are actually one link too long. I'll take that link out right now. And I'll double check it to make sure that we've got the right length. And we do. What's the right tension when we install our belt? Well, you could say it's 2% of the overall length, but you're going to find that on most of the 90 degree corners that you work on, that's going to amount to either three or four links that have to come out of the belt in order to get the right tension. One of the nice things about our belt is that we're going to be able to take this belt I'm going to make it to length and pre-tension it, and we're going to pull it right back up over the take-ups. 
That may be the right tension to run the belt, but we'll double check it. We've pulled the belt through without disassembling any of the conveyor. I do have three rollers pulled off so I have access to the take up. So what we're going to do is get the proper tension. The proper tension is removing somewhere around 2% of the overall length. What that amounts to on almost every 90 degree, degree corner is three to four links. That's going to take out four to five inches of belt, which in most cases will be close to that 2% that we talked about. So what I'm going to do to this belt now, we've sized it hand tight as you can see around the drive as it sits. So now I'm going to take out, because this is a short corner, I'll take out four links, or probably three links. One. Two. Three. What I've basically done there is pre-tension the belt. Now with the belt off of the take up, with a little bit of slack, we're going to put the belt back together. To put it back together, we'll do just what we described in the beginning. We'll insert this tab down through and hook that corner. We'll put it back together. So now we got one link in. Now we'll put the second link in and line that up. Now the belt's back together. The nice thing about power twist roller drive is there will be enough give to the belt that now that we've pre-tensioned it, I can actually take the belt, stretch it over the take-ups, put it on the take-up. You can see now that actually the tension that we put on just by shortening it is enough to rotate your rollers. That's the right tension. People ask, what is the right tension for a belt on a corner? It's always the load, the, the tension required to move the boxes and turn the rollers and not slip on the drive pulley. Anything other than that is an overload situation and you tend to want to either stretch the belt or start to produce wear on your snub pulleys. As you look at this conveyor, you'll notice that we're running in full, what we call full V pulleys. This is a V belt, it's a tab belt. For us to work properly, we have to be in a full V groove pulley. You may have pulleys on, snub pulleys on your conveyor that have what we call a single flange. Now on a rubber belt, that's forcing that rubber belt up against the roller and you're running on the bottom of the V-belt, the rubber V-belt. With us, you'd be running on the tabs and that can create vibration. So what we recommend is a one-time change if you're running either single flange V pulleys or you might run across what we call a cam follower style setup where there are cam followers guiding your belt and slamming your belt up against the rollers. We recommend a one-time replacement to a full V snub pulley. We manufacture the pulley. We've actually got brackets available to mount them on your conveyor. It's a one-time change and that will allow power to roller drive to function as it's designed as a V-groove pulley with no vibration. To sum this up, what we're doing is a faster installation, less than 15 minutes a longer life, three to four times the life of your rubber belt. We've got belts in the field that have been running over six years on live roller conveyor corners just like this. All of these lead to considerable cost savings and less downtime. Appreciate your time for watching the video. Either reach us on our website at www.fenderdrives.com or call us on our toll-free number 1-800-243-3374. We'd be happy to answer any questions and set up a chance for our uh, trained sales representative to come in and talk to you about your applications. Thank you.